Have you been marked? You are going to experience something tonight where the Lord is going to mark you with his favor, with his honor, with his protection, with his goodness, his mercy, his glory. With his presence, you, with his love. You're going to have a great time tonight. This can be a, a very exhilarating teaching. The Holy Spirit prompted me today to ask have you been marked? You know, we hear about the mark of the beast. Tonight, we're going to talk about the mark of the Lord. Joanna, would you just open us in prayer? So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. And now we just release your anointing over us and over every person watching. And we pray that you would speak to them, speak to their heart, their mind, their body, their soul, their spirit. We break off fear and we release faith. And we release your anointing to break every yoke and bless everyone watching in Jesus' name. Have you been marked? So in uh, Ephesians 1, 13 through 14, it says, You were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance. Galatians 6, 17 the Apostle Paul said after he got born again and he went through some real changes, uh, discovering what he must suffer uh, for, for the Lord Jesus, he said this. He said, from now on, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said this in John 6, 27. He said, do not labor for the things which perishes." For food which perishes, but labor for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal or mark upon him. And we also see that uh, in Revelation 7 2, this is so powerful. In the book of Revelation, as judgments are falling out of the sky, it says, then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of God on their foreheads. And in Revelation 9, three through four, it says, then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth and to them was given power. As the scorpions of the earth have power, they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Have you been marked? We get marked with the Lord when we get born again. If you haven't been born again, you can just invite Jesus into your heart. Just cast off the old things. Just say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. You were buried in the tomb. And on the third mm -hmm. day, you rose from the dead. I invite you. I invite you into my heart. I turn from my old ways. I want to serve you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Make me new. Take out my old heart of stone and give me a fleshly heart. Put your spirit within me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Move me from the inside out of relationship with you to follow your decrees, to keep your commands. Grant the mark of the Lord upon me that would insulate me from anything that comes on the earth. No plague shall come nigh my dwelling from this day forward. Death angel will pass over. No COVID-19. Any other thing must go far from me because I am marked, sealed, with the Holy Spirit, the mark of the Lord. Joanna? Yeah, and if this is the first time you're receiving Jesus, that might feel a little overwhelming. And, you know, it's just so simple. It's just inviting him into your heart and asking him to mark your heart with his love and asking him to forgive you of your sins and to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And he will give you strength. You know, there's a lot of us, it's been a scary time right now. And, and so we want to encourage you that as you press into his presence, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future. 
And as you seek me with all your heart, this is the key right here. As all your heart. As you seek me with all your heart, then I will be found by you, says the Lord. Have you been seeking him with all your heart? Has there been some distractions come your way? Maybe social media posts, text messages, uh, different videos on this and that, and here's what's going on. None of that stuff is bad in and of itself. But I got to tell you, seeking him brings the peace of God that bypasses our understanding and then fills and floods our soul. We're kind of moving in and out because of our technology. So it's the glory of God. It's the glory of God. We are not holograms. We are real people. That's right. <laughs> Hey, I want to share some more with you because this is an important thing. So we often hear things about taking the mark of the beast and be careful about the mark of the beast. And obviously we need to use wisdom, but the mark of the beast uh, either goes upon the forehead or the hand. And I want to share with you prophetically what that would apply to, not just uh, something in your forehead, a physical mark or a chip or a nanotechnology. And all those things are readily available now in Switzerland. They're already putting them in. People are willingly taking them because they like them. They want them because it gives them a, you know, a smart chip. They don't need to carry a credit card. Nobody's going to steal their credit card. If they steal their credit card, they stole their hand or their head. <laughs> and then that's going to be pretty evident when you walk in and try to use somebody's hand or head. So um, one of the things that I learned years ago is the mark of the beast is really on the forehead or the hand. And the forehead is what we think, our thinking patterns, who we're in agreement with. Our hand is the work of our hands. You know, we're talking about, uh, you know, do we have holy hands or are our hands, you know, filthy with uh, innocent blood or that kind of thing. You see so many things in scripture where the hands are symbolic of labor, what we do with our hands, striking wicked fists or manipulating, winking with our you know, eyes and feet and, you know, sending private messages. Book of Revelation talks about a lot of things with the, the, the mark of the beast, the 666. Well, those things are real, but what would empower you not to take that mark would be to be marked with the Lord. There's already someone who's marked you, who paid the price for you. His name is Jesus. And so we're going to look briefly at Ezekiel 9. Now this can be a little bit of an intense passage. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of want to prepare you. At the same time, I don't want to just preach part of the Bible. We just saw in the book of Revelation, where those that are marked or sealed, the plague doesn't hit them. The angels don't touch them. No plague comes nigh their dwelling. They only see with their eyes and behold the destruction of the wicked. Where, where do you want to be? Do you want to be on the Lord's side? Or do you want to be on the enemy's side? Or do you want to be somewhere in the middle? I, I got news for you. The enemy owns the fence. So if you're riding the fence, it's time to get on the Lord's side. So this is, like I said, it's kind of intense, but prepare. Ezekiel chapter 9, verses 1 through 11. Then... God called out in my hearing with a loud voice saying, let those who have charge over the city draw near each with a deadly weapon in his hand. Ezekiel chapter nine, verses one through 11. And suddenly six men came out from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with a battle ax in his hand. One man among them, one man among the six was clothed with fine linen and had a writer's inkhorn by his side. He had a writer's inkhorn by his side. They went in and stood beside the bronze altar. So there's six men, five with battle axes in their hand, and one with an inkhorn in his hand by his side. And he called the man clothed with linen who had the writer's inkhorn at his side. And he said, go through the midst of this city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and who cry over all the abominations that are done within this city. Mm -hmm. Go 
and put a mark on the foreheads of the men, symbolic of the people, whether it's man, woman, or child, that sigh and cry. They have a broken heart over the abominations that are done in their city. Now, it's interesting here. If you want the mark of the Lord, there needs to be a, a brokenness before the Lord. You know, we're crucified with Christ. It's no longer us who live, but it's Christ Jesus who lives in us. And the life that we now live in the flesh, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Galatians 2.20. Have you really committed to the Lord? There was a man who had a vision years ago, and he saw the Lord's sword coming through the congregation. And only those that had bowed before him, the sword didn't affect but they were bowed low, it went over them because they were humble and reliant upon the Lord. Judgment had passed over them. They were hidden in the secret place of the Most High. They were hidden under the shadow of the Almighty where no weapon formed against them prospers. Every tongue that rises up against them in judgment is condemned. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Are you marked? Have you received the mark of the inkhorn of the Lord. Now, these aren't my words, by the way. This is your book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 3 and 4, chapter 9 in the book of Revelation, verses 3 and 4, talking about those that are marked. Let's seal them with the mark in the book of Revelation in 7. And in 9, it says, go ahead and destroy everything except those that are sealed with the mark. Judgment will pass over them. You see this mirrored not just in Revelation 7, 3 and 4, and Revelation 9, 2, 3, and 4, but also in Ezekiel chapter 9. So I'm just going to read this again. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 3. Now the glory of God of Israel had gone up from the cherub where it had been to the threshold of the temple and called. he called unto the man clothed with the linen who had the writer's ink horn at his side. And the Lord said to him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, symbolic of your city, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within that city. To the others he said in my hearing, go after him through the city and kill. They had the axes. Do not let your eyes spare, nor have any pity. Utterly slay old and young men, maidens and little children and women, but do not come near anyone whom is the mark. Where does he say begin? Does he say at the at the, the brothel? Does he say at the casino? Does he say over at the pornography studio? No, nope, no, nope, that's not where he says. He says, and begin at my sanctuary. Judgment must begin at the house of the Lord. You and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Judgment must begin at our house. We can judge ourselves, and we don't have to be judged. Jesus said, when you take communion, um, do this in remembrance of me. And we judge ourselves so that we're not judged. We get underneath that blessing under the spout where the glory flows out. Go ahead, Joanna. Yeah, and, and also just to like, what does that mean exactly in real day to real time to judge ourselves? So if we're, if we're walking and we're saying we have Jesus within us, right? That means uh, the Bible talks about us, our minds being renewed in his love, in his Holy Spirit. Well, what's the fruit of the Holy Spirit? The fruit is love, joy, forgiveness, self-control, um, and, and all those things. Uh, slow to anger, quick to forgive, all those kinds of things. Now, in the scripture, it's talking about, you know, judging, starting at the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So at the sanctuary, which is the church, what does the church, what is the people of the church who say they bear the name of Christ, what are they really doing in secret? What's really happening behind closed doors that people don't know about? What's on your computer? Right. And not just your computer, but what's, what's in your heart? Is there unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, hatred? And, you know, and, and here I know this is a sensitive topic as well, but also the, you know, what's being allowed to take place? You know, is there sexual promiscuity? And is there a lawlessness, lying, deceiving, you know, uh, conniving, conniving, manipulation, intimidation, justice, no. right. you know, is a church standing up for things that are not right. And, um, you and know, standing against those or things. standing against those things or becoming silent. Right. James four seventeen says to him who knows to do good and does it not to him, it is sin. 
It's the sin of silence, mm -hmm. the sin of omission, omitting to do something when we should. It's not just the things we commit, it's the things that we omit. Go ahead. Right. Sorry, I just had to. No, no, that's good. It is. It's, it's the silence. And there's been a lot of silence on a lot of issues. And I had a, I had a vision a few weeks ago when I was praying. And I saw this vision of this, these contracts that were up in high places. And then I saw this giant ink pen that was red. And it was filled with the blood of little children who are in sex trafficking, babies who are being aborted right at birth, all these things. And the feeling was so grievous that I experienced in seeing that vision and what I felt, I was just, I, I couldn't even talk. And so that, that was grieving and I repented on behalf of the, our nation and those places that these things have been happening and in asking God to change those things and to forgive us as a country. But, you know, we've been seeing some very scary things starting to take place. And what will change that is all of us who say we bear the name of Christ to fall on our knees and grieve that and ask God to intervene and repent. To sigh and to cry for right. the abominations that are done in our city. Not just to say, I'm not participating in them, but have you taken an active role in intercession, in praying, asking God's mercy, that he would intervene in the lives of those that are on a wrong path or the ones that are committing those acts? Mm -hmm. I mean, you would never participate in them, but are you interceding and asking God to take, take and meet us all of Tarsus on the road to Damascus or to intervene? with someone who's, you know, caught up in that lifestyle and perpetrating those things against others. And there's a lot of victims. Right. And are you given voice or are you just turning a blind eye or a deaf ear? Because this is what brings the mark. You know, the apostle Paul in Galatians 6, 17 that I read earlier, he says, I now bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let no man judge me. And so Paul was out killing Christians, but he had a road to Damascus experience where Jesus appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus, King Saul, Saul of Tarsus, mm -hmm. who became Paul, wrote two thirds in the New Testament after that encounter. But Saul was out consenting to Stephen's death and he was holding the men's clothes as they stoned him to death. He held their clothes so they didn't get blood splatter on him. I mean, that's just the reality. And I know this can be a little bit of an intense message, but I think it's time that, you know, we, we, you know, don't just eat cake and ice cream. We have to, you know, eat some collard greens and some Brussels sprouts as right. well. And so, uh, so what happened is the apostle Paul on the road to Damascus, Ananias was told, go lay hands on him. He's my chosen servant. He will see what great things he must suffer and be persecuted for my name's sake. When you intercede and pray for men or women that have been caught up in some really evil stuff. Mm -hmm. When they come to Christ, they become powerhouses. And God's will is that none perish, but all men come to repentance. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked repent. And when we begin to sigh and cry for the abominations that are done in our city, and we begin to cry out on our knees before the Lord, on our faces before God and pray and fast, God begins to do something miraculous. And when he saves those people, what happens is their lives are transformed dramatically. They're, they're, they're revolutionized. It's a 360 turnaround. They're just all of a sudden they're, you know, Clark Kent to Superman in, in, the, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that doesn't mean they got away with everything. It means they're not going to be judged in eternity. But trust me, from somebody who was on the wrong path for many years, mm -hmm. when the Lord saved me and radically he did, uh, it didn't just change overnight. I went through surreal challenging stuff and you can read my book jet ride to hell journey to freedom and it's a lengthy discourse and it chronicles the miracles of what god did in response to my mother's prayers when i was a wayward child but trust me i didn't get away with anything i got delivered from my lifestyle and behavior and the old nature but i still had to go through some stuff so intercede and pray for people because God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked repent. 
And so Paul, the apostle, what he went through, he was beaten with rods, he was stoned to death, he was a day and a night in the deep, he was in hunger and thirst often, and fastings often, he was in perils with countrymen, he fought wild beasts at Ephesus. He said, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you marked today? We're going to get marked by coming out of agreement with the old mindset. We're going to take the old mark off of our forehead of the old stinking thinking, and we're going to get rid of some old works that we do with our hands. Mm -hmm. And God's going to take the old mark of the enemy off of you and give you the mark of the ink horn of the Lord. Joanna, would you share some words and then go ahead and when you pop back in, yeah. <laughs> from the rapture. We'll see if Jesus uh, lets you come back. back. We're back. <laughs> so we're having some technology problems and zooming it up. But uh, uh, I think the words make the difference, not just the faces. Exactly. You know, and here's the thing, you know, the, our culture had had kind of moved and shifted. Well, actually not kind of, but it did move and shift to where you, you have to be silent on things that you believe in that others don't and then if they don't agree with you then you know they beat you over the head or bully you or shame you or that sort of thing well that silence that's a tactic of the enemy to try and keep people in fear afraid of speaking up and so part of this sighing and crying out to god especially mm. during this time we're still in the week of passover is come out of agreement with agreeing to be silent yeah. You know, it's like someone who knows that a child is being abused and they keep silent. They didn't abuse the child, but guess what? They allowed it to happen because they didn't say anything. They were complicit by mm -hmm. silence. It's the sin of silence. Right. To him who knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. What, what does it really matter what people think about you? The, the Apostle Paul said this, who, if I, whom do I seek to please, God or man? If I was still seeking to please man, I would not be a bondservant of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wouldn't have been marked. You know, you can be sealed with the Holy Spirit and going to heaven, but do you want to be marked? Do you want to go next level? Mm -hmm. This isn't a salvation issue. If you've been born again, your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're going to heaven, but wouldn't it be nice to have heaven in you that you can actually be a vessel of honor fit for the master's use, not just be, uh, how do I say this? A child of God, but a son or a daughter with sonship. And wouldn't you like to be the bride of Christ and not just the church? Because out of the church comes the bride. Mm -hmm. Esther was picked out of the women. Don't you want to be chosen out? Everybody's called, but fewer chosen. Mm -hmm. But you get a chance to be chosen by choosing him, the deeper walk. And I want to share this illustration about the power of not being silent, not bowing down to compromise, not bowing down to fear and manipulation and, and intimidation. You know, our country was founded on courage. Mm. Our flag, that flag still stands today because when the British were gonna bomb, when they bombed Fort Henry, they were bombing that flag all night long. And that flag still stood, even because with all the artillery of the British Army, it was still standing. Why? Because of the men and women who gave their lives, who refused to bow down to fear, their bodies held up that flag. And I feel like God is calling us, his people, talking the one to you who know him, who say you name the name of Christ. He is calling us to stand up and to stop being silent and to speak up and to speak up with that kind of boldness and passion that our patriots had when they helped save this country to stand as a united republic under one nation, under one God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. For all. For all, not just a few select, all, everybody. So it's time for us to now begin to cry out to, so that heaven can hear that frequency. Everything has a frequency. Silence has a frequency. Mm. Pain has a frequency. Joy has a frequency. Mm. Repentance, which really means to change your mind.
And that is what's so amazing about our gospel is that when we change our mind and we allow Jesus to shift our heart, that is where true magic happens. That is where transformation and change happen. That, that is where we change the world around us. We, one person, can change the world in a radical way. We've seen that all throughout history. God wants you to be that changer now, too. And you get to be the change in your household. That's right. You get right. to be the change in your neighborhood. You get to be change in your city. Your community. The change in your community, the change in your state, the change in your nation, the change in the world. And he who's faithful with little God gives authority over much. And here's the beautiful part about it. It's not your ability or my ability. Mm -hmm. It's our willingness and our availability. Right. And he literally fills us and empowers us. You know, the difference between religion and relationship is this. Religion is do's and don'ts. And it, it tells you, you got to do this and, and, and don't Wipes do that. Wipes the finger at you did this wrong. We, we, we. And if you do get, do it right and you're better than the people around you, you feel a swelling of pride. Right. And you look down with your long nose at them of religion. And, and then when you finally fail and then you've earned your guilt, shame, and condemnation, that's, that's religion. Right. Relationship doesn't require you to do things. It empowers you to do things. So relationship is different than religion. Religion requires you to do things, some of which you can and some of which you can't. But relationship with the Lord empowers you by the Holy Spirit to do things that would never be possible. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you've heard it said of old, thou shall not kill, but I say unto you under grace, thou shall not even look at a person with hate in your heart. You've already committed murder. You say, heard it said of old, thou shall not commit adultery, but I say unto you, I'm gonna raise the standard because it's gonna be an empowerment by the Holy Spirit should not even look upon a woman with lust or you've already committed adultery in your heart. So do you see how Jesus didn't lower the standard under grace? He actually raised the standard because it's an empowerment by the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel 36, 24 says, he will take out our heart of stone. He will give us a heart of flesh. He will give us a new spirit. We'll get born again. He'll put his spirit within us, the Holy Spirit, and then he, by relationship, empowerment of the Holy Spirit, will move us to follow his decrees and keep his commands. Not because his commandments are grievous, because now they become joyous, because you're moved on the inside. Do you want that empowerment today? Do you want a fresh dose of the Holy Ghost? Do you want to have that heart that bows before the Lord in humility, and then he raises you up in courage to speak instead of being silent? Do you want to be marked with the mark of the Lord that will seal you from any peril of the adversary. He'll carry you through on angels' wings and though a thousand fall by your side and 10,000 by your right hand, it will not come near you. You will only see with your eyes and behold the destruction of others around you. We'll even be able to reach out and save some, pulling them out of the fire. You'll be like one who has the anointing of Peter's shadow that devils come out and people are healed when you walk in the room because you're not a thermometer taking the temperature. So oh, it's fearful. It's this, that. No, you're a thermostat. You change the temperature. You bring in faith and you begin to release the miraculous, the atmosphere of heaven. This is the empowerment of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27. You're a son of God, seated far above all principality, power, might, and dominion. You're a daughter of God, co-heirs with Christ, and you have authority to speak a thing and decree it out of relationship with the Lord, and he'll bring it to pass. He'll cause that which you speak in agreement with him out of partnership of the Father's heart with humanity to release heaven to invade earth, that it truly might be done, as Jesus taught in Matthew 6, in the Lord's prayer, that it might be done in mm -hmm. earth as it is in heaven. Are you marked? Let's get marked right now. Mm -hmm. And greater is he that is in you. So guess what? You are powerful. Mm -hmm. You are powerful because God created you that way. And him, if you have accepted Jesus into your heart, then he is inside and he wants to operate through you. So don't believe any lies anymore that, you know, oh, little me, what do I have to say? I don't make a difference. That thing I say is going to change anything anyways. That's a bunch of hogwash. It's not true. Today, God's stirring your spirit That's right. right now. I it's can no sense accident it right now. that you're watching this right now because he's stirring you. He's stirring his people to begin to stand up and raise their voices again, to stand up, to speak, 
to stop being silent and to walk in the, his power and his glory and his anointing. And he will give you the courage. So yeah, it, it's not easy, right? But nothing good is sometimes. But with him, all things are possible. And here's the key. It's what I said in the beginning in Jeremiah 29, 11, the last sentence. If you seek me with all your heart, then I will be found by you. That's the key right there is seeking God with all your heart. And then he will be found by you. You'll find him. You'll see him. You'll experience him. And that is the end game. And to then help others be able to experience that love and that presence. That's what we're here for. God's about to clothe you with fresh armor, mm -hmm. the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the feet covered and shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He's about to give you a fresh shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And he's also about to empower you with the mark of the Lord that will seal you in a new level and also give you the lance of intercession. And then he's going to put his glory upon you, which mm -hmm. is your rear guard. So in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12 through 10 through 18, you see the warfare of the principalities, powers, rulers, the darkness, and the spiritual wickedness in high places. But he says, therefore, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand. In Isaiah 58, 8b, there is the glory of the Lord for those that fast and pray and sigh and cry. He begins to cover your back as you go into battle so you don't get speared from behind. So mm -hmm. let us go ahead and ask the Lord right now and come out of agreement with the old and come into the agreement with him and come into deeper relationship during this time of quarantine, the gift of quarantine where we might seek him during Passover mm -hmm. with the blood upon the doorpost and the lentils of our house, the blood upon our forehead and across our heart because yes. you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Joanna? Mm -hmm. So I just want to sing this to you. I just feel led to sing it. I'm making it up right as I sing. So I didn't plan this, but I feel this led to do it. So I want you to I invite you to close your eyes right now. And so Heavenly Father, I just release your anointing right now over your son and daughter. And I just thank you for your presence to fall upon them like a glory cloud. Because you are calling them to greater things. You're calling them into freedom. You're calling them into healing. You're calling them into your presence. I'm calling your name. Just say yes to me. The great I am. He is calling you. He loves you so, he loves you so, let him touch your heart, open up and let him in, he'll take away your fears, he'll take away your pain. His peace, it covers you. Just say yes to him. He will fill you like never before. Beautiful. God loves you so much. Right now, Lord, we receive you afresh into the depths of our being. We give you permission to go into every yes, room Jesus. and begin to take preeminence. We place you on the throne of our lives afresh. We ask that you would now begin to free us from old thinking and fill us with the mind of Christ mm -hmm. and to put a fresh measure of your spirit within us as we're in this 2020 season. And when instead of the corona, the crown of fear, we receive the corona, the crown of of faith and authority in this season mm -hmm. and we receive it now that we're more than conquerors by the power of the holy spirit that dwells in us like jeremiah mm -hmm. with a fire shut up in our bones we release that fire yes to everyone listening under the sound of my voice because faith is activated at times mm -hmm by voice so we declare 
We declare victory for you and your household, peace and protection and provision for your household. We declare an increase of the presence of God yes. and the prophetic to come into your household that the power that you operate in perpetuates the purposes and the plans of God throughout your community. In Jesus' mighty name, mm -hmm. God loves you and so do we. Mm -hmm. Jesus is king. Yes. Where you make him king and today he's king of your house. I'm David. I'm Joanna. We are the Herobedians Virtual Church Media in His Presence, where all things are possible. That's right. Welcome to the new arena of quantum Christianity, where things change in an instant, and they're never the same, That's because right. you've had an encounter with the King, Jesus. Amen. We love you. God bless. Love you guys. Bye-bye.